Political unrest is spreading throughout Northern Africa and the Middle East. Here today to talk about that and much more are fellow faculty members at Volunteer State, Associate Professor of History George Pimentel, and Associate Professor of Geography Keith Bell. What led to the Egyptian Revolution of 2011? Really, they needed a catalyst, uh, and we've seen this with uh, the spread of the revolutions, if you will, and uh, unrest across the Middle East uh, from Tunisia, and they're what they now call the Jasmine Revolution, where uh, there, so much unemployment, so much dissatisfaction of the population there. Um, this one. Uh, this one man, believe it or not, had a, uh, a street stall that was unlicensed, and so the police officers came and, and confiscated his material and, and, and essentially his job. And uh, he, uh, he protested against the government and set himself on fire in mid-December and finally died in January. And others saw this. Of course, they are connected to the world, so they saw the video. They had the word of mouth in what's called the Arab Street. Uh, so other individuals also tried to commit suicide, and another one was successful. And this really was a groundswell of support against what uh, was a dictator, uh, Ben Ali, as their president, and no longer. And it went very quickly for them. Is this just a sign of the democratization of technology? Is this just how technology is changing the world? I think that, in, in some ways, not everyone is completely as poverty-stricken as we assume that they are. But it also shows that these are young people, and young people tend to tap into this new technology um, faster than others. Um, I, I think it was uh, unbelievably relevant that the first thing that Egypt did was to kill the internet and cell phones as soon as this started mm -hmm. in an effort to cut it off. And it's incredibly important. Um, it's the way that they have been getting the message out. And uh, it is going to uh, transform society. You know, one of the ways that dictators maintain control is by limiting the information that people can get. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just like, uh, you know, if, if we tell them everything is fine and someone's the enemy, if that's the only message that you get, obviously it's easier to make that control. But with now with Facebook, with the Twitter accounts, um, <laughs> we are exporting our culture and it's easy for them to get alternate viewpoints and I think it's going to change society.